Hi guys, today we're going to chat a little bit about shad traces and shad baits again. And I'm going to show you a trace and a bait that's commonly used along the KZN South Coast during the shad season. And it's a very simple but very effective manner of catching shad. Um, this is obviously aimed at guys that are new at the sport and holiday makers that come down and want to catch shad. And this is a very effective and very easy way to catch shad. So basically what you need is your shad trace. Alright, and then you need a nice big top bung, nice and bright so you can see it in the water. Cotton, a pair of scissors and a fresh sardine. So that's all you need to start off with. So let's set up this whole bait. First thing you take your main line, it comes from your rod and we need to attach our float. Pull out this little insert and feed the line from the top of the float. That's your main line coming from your rod. Um, feed it through your, your big float. Pull it approximately 50 or 60 centimeters and push the pin back in. The purpose of this pin is obviously to hold your line so your your float, your cork doesn't slide up and down the line. So I want to give it about 40 centimeters to half a meter and then we're going to attach our trace to the other end of this line. We attach our shear trace to our main line and what you're left with Basically, this is I'm making it a bit shorter just so you guys can see. You've got your main line coming from your rod, your big float, another piece of main line. That you'll determine the depth of the water you're fishing in, but generally it's like a half a meter, and then your shared trace. And that's a basic setup of this trace. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna attach the bait and show you guys how to rig the bait onto the shared trace. Not much cutting involved with this bait at all. All I like to do is actually just cut off that tail section on the sardine. And the reason for that is that if there's a bit of pull in the water, I don't want the sardine to twist in the water like this and spin up my old trace. So by cutting that off, the sardine will lie nice and still in the water and it'll give you good movement and a much better bait presentation. So I'm just gonna grab my scissors and cut that tail section off. All right, and that's our sardine ready to be attached to our trace. Next step, we take our trace, we grab our shared trace, and the first step is to take the top hook of our shared trace and hook it through both lips of the sardine. From the bottom up, and then through the top lip like that. And you grab your trace, and you just hang it on the side of the sardine, Get everything nice and straight. All right, so we get everything nice and straight. I'm just gonna turn this sardine around. We place this bottom hook, which is close to the tail of the sardine, facing up, and I take my cotton and cotton this hook onto the sardine. And make sure you keep the hook nice and proud. So put some cotton on the eye of the hook itself and that'll keep it upright and proud. After I've done that, I'll just sort of finish it off. A little loop knot and the, your bottom hook's attached. Now we're gonna do the same to our second hook. Got it nice and proud and just cotton that on as well. A few winds over the eye hook itself and then finish it off 
fill loop knot over the hook. And that's it, break off a cotton. And that is our chair top bung. We've got a sardine with a top hook, basically it's holding the sardine nice and straight. We have two bottom hooks, one close to the tail, one a bit higher up, nice and proud. And then we've got our float. And the purpose of this float is just to keep this bait in a certain level in the water. So you can, the water you're fishing in, you're going to determine how deep you want this bait. Obviously you start getting bites at a certain depth. You set your float at the depth and you keep it there. Generally you're going to start off by using a trace that's half a meter to three quarters of a meter. And as I said, depending on the depth of the water and where these fish are feeding, you can set the height of your float. So you'll cast your bait out. Um, it's a very light bait, so you're going to cast it quite far. And just keep on picking up the slack, watch your float. And if your float starts pulling and it goes underwater, you know there's a shad bite where you might even feel it. And generally, the, one of the bottom hooks will get the shad in the mouth and is on.